Welcome to the Model Rail Replacement Podcast, helping you get to your onward journey. A friendly service that helps you get from A to B, or probably nowhere at all. Hello and welcome to the Model Rail Replacement Podcast. This is episode 18. I'm your host, James, and with me is co-host and producer, Sam. Good morning. How are you? I'm good, Sam. How are you? Yeah, I'm all right. I realise I screwed you over by me asking how you are, so (laughs) I thought I'd mix it up a little bit. We're going off script on this episode. Yeah, you tried to do this to me last week and you completely threw me last week and we had to re-record it because <laughs> I wasn't <laughs> expecting you to ask me first how I was. We always have a format of I ask you. <laughs> yeah. So then I was stumped there. I was like, oh, I haven't actually thought about how I am. <laughs> <laughs> and you just have an existential crisis whilst, whilst we're recording, <laughs> despite the fact how that you are you? And I... <laughs> I'm in a blind panic right now, to be honest. <laughs> I'm spiralling and I need Doritos. Um, I suppose if you do want me to go first, I, I can say I'm, I'm OK. I'm OK. I'm, uh, I'm a, little, a little annoyed um, about uh, something, which is sort of kind of goes back to the very beginning of this uh, podcast when we were talking about um, neurodivergence and comments and being nice. But um, basically, someone put a post up on uh, Instagram last night and I was uh, waiting for my food to cook in the microwave at work, so I was just having a little scroll through. And it was a photo of some uh, rails that had been very, very badly damaged by some wheel slip. And uh, the poster wasn't sure where it was. And I thought, I recognise that. That looks like um, Salisbury, where uh, the 59003 was used to try and pull back the derailed unit. Um, and if you haven't seen that, I think the Bash Mash have a very good video of it and possibly put the Thomas the Tank Engine rescue music over the top, if I recall. Um, if you can find that, it's, it's quite a good video to watch. But you can see why the Loco destroyed the track. Anyway, um, as, as is my position, what I do, sometimes I'm privy to certain photos that shouldn't get out into the public but sometimes they do and i was like i recognize that photo i've seen that photo before so uh i, I assumed it was salisbury but um turns out it's australia and um has a very interesting story behind it but uh, unfortunately i was i only found that out because a couple of people thought they just put some very unhelpful comments of basically uh, just sort of calling me out and got it wrong with no actual sort of insight into what it was. So um annoyed me a little bit, if I'm honest, because it's like, I don't mind being told I'm wrong or being proved wrong, but, you know, it's it's usually quite helpful if you tell me why I'm wrong rather than just call me an idiot <laughs> and don't say, give me the reason why. Yeah, but, um, not exactly the kindest way of doing it or the most productive way of telling you that you're wrong. No, nah, exactly. So um, I had a little look through and someone actually commented and put the correct answer, which was, yeah, it was Australia. And the result being that the loco brakes and because of the massive trains they have, the one in the middle didn't get the signal to break. And so the wheels kept spinning, even though the train wasn't moving and basically just grinded the uh, rails down. So um, it's kind of crazy to think that that sort of happened. Um, so I was quite happy to comment on my own comment and say that, I, yep, I'm wrong. Ignore me. It's not Salisbury. It is, in fact, Australia. And had I looked closer at the rails i would have noticed that the chairs that hold the rail in place are not uk standard um but everything else looked very similar like it was uh the sleepers looked pretty much the same the stones looked the same the vegetation around there and as i say the photo i'd seen it looked very much like the same photo so i was happy to admit i was wrong and then i still had people telling me that i was wrong (laughs) so i was like I can't be asked for this. <laughs> I delete, I don't usually delete comments, you know, but I was like, no, that's gone. I can't be bothered with people telling me I'm wrong without telling me what is the right answer. You know what I mean? Even reading <laughs> the rest of the post to see that you'd admitted that you were wrong. Is that thing of people jumping on to get a one up on you kind of thing? Yeah, <laughs> it wasn't really needed. You know, it's kind of if someone's wrong, just be helpful and say why. But don't be rude about it. I just imagine these people sat on their phones going, eh, yeah. at every wrong <laughs> comment that they see, whilst actually not being helpful. Like the uh, the catchphrase uh, jingles going on in their head. Um, <laughs> so yeah, so harking back, people, if you're going to tell someone that they're wrong, at least back, back up what you're saying. Not because you need to prove that you're right, but to be helpful, 
Like, <laughs> I guess that's the biggest thing here is like, that's not helpful yeah. is, is what's the annoying thing about that situation. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we're always getting things wrong on the, on the podcast. So, uh, you know, uh, I think my, um, uh, Waterloo quote about Lord Nelson, that was historically wrong. This was the Duke of Wellington, but you know, I'm quite happy to be pointing out that I've said these things wrong. I don't mind that, but, um, yeah. Something, but that was almost because someone gave me the right answer. Yeah, and that was helpful. I learned. We all learn. Yeah, I mean, not ideal. So let's talk about something positive. What have you been up to, hobby wise, this week, James? Um, what have I been up to, hobby wise, this week? Oh, I suppose uh, me, me, and uh, me and the boy have started building um, a, a new engage layout for him. So um, you'd probably appreciate that. I haven't actually finished the current one. I started building for him, but. What he really wanted to do was have a layout that he could take to exhibitions. And I think I may have mentioned this last week, but he has been asked to attend an exhibition. But I think the layout that we're currently working on won't fit in the car with him in the car. So um, we are now working on something that will allow a um, little person in the back seat and uh, a layout so that we can attend exhibitions. So um, that's our new project of the week we've sort of been starting on, but we've just been laying bits of track down on baseboards and haven't really got very far with it. And apart from that, the only other modeling I've been doing is he also wanted a 15XX in Lego. So uh, I spent three hours building one of them and he was very pleased with it. And I'll, I'll be honest, I was too. I thought it looked quite good. And I, I showed my friend at work, who's uh, quite a fan of that loco because he used to drive it at, uh, on the Seven Valley and, uh, he, he was quite impressed with it as well. So um, I need to probably put that on the Instagram so people can have a look. But that's that's been my week of uh, what's been going on. How about yourself? Uh, my week has been running trains in circles, having a lot of fun with that. Um, I've been doing a lot of weathering. I guess the biggest thing is that uh, we've had some movement on the house. So I've sort of doubled down on packing stuff because whilst I've packed a lot of things, there's still loads of bits and bobs that you go oh that can wait and then in the end what i did was i got loads of, i think i emptied about eight or nine flat pack boxes worth of stuff uh just into boxes and went i'll just sort that out when i get to the next destination because it's that thing of i've been up in the loft hundreds of times to try and pack stuff away and you go i might need that i might need that there's a strong chance i might need that knowing full well that i haven't used any of this stuff in two years so maybe i don't actually need it but it's that hoarder's mentality of not wanting to throw stuff away so what i have had is uh i'm this will come out on the monday but i'm currently also preparing to go to chatham so or chatham uh so i've been packing up bits and bobs ready to take to the show uh to work on bits that i can sort of display uh some of my custom painted bits bits that i've done uh that are a little bit out of the ordinary so like my three car thumper unit that's coming with me i've also just been going maybe i need to sell this <laughs> so i'm in like this this weird limbo and i finally finished the uh two four car Four VEPs uh, in Connex livery for my friend Martin of Folly Lane. Uh, once again, I say this all the time. A massive thank you to Martin for the patience on this project. A lot of nothing, really. There's loads of little jobs I've been up to. So anyway, James, what have we got coming up in the show for everyone? Today, we have our final um, modeler guest of the season, because we've got one more interview next week, just a break format. Uh, today, we are going to be talking to Tris from double o'neil uh so that's coming up it's an absolutely great conversation tris is uh, a really nice guy to talk to um he's uh I, I think in truth he approached both of us separately many sort of years ago um to sort of open up a communication sort of build a i suppose a model rail community sort of friendship kind of thing um so yeah it was very nice to sort of the three of us to get together and have a chat about model railway so that is coming up um later on in the show but for now we shall move on to news i mean I don't think we really covered much last week but there wasn't really much to cover but this week there's a few little things so uh yeah news time excellent uh so i mean today is also the day that there was a small backman announcement and i'm gonna say it was short it was sweet it was pretty i'm gonna say one one of the better announcements to come out this year and small was the word because um I think both me and you fell into the trap of, oh, it's Backman announcing something. It must be double O gauge. But it wasn't. <laughs> and yes, I, I did go into it going, it must be O gauge. Uh, and it wasn't. It was part of their Graham Farish N gauge range. Now, 
James, this is definitely your wheelhouse. All I can comment is that it does look beautiful and there's some really cool little effects that they've added into it. But as somebody who likes LNER Locos, what, what did you think of the announcement? Do you know what? It, it surprised me in the fact that I knew that they had the Paul Tooling uh, LNER V2 because that's what's been announced. I think we've... We've talked about it, but we've not actually said what, what, what they have announced. But yes, it's the LNR V2. And um, yeah, I, I was always under the impression that they'd already retooled it into a newer model, but apparently they haven't. Or well, I've, I've completely missed so many years of my life that I just didn't notice. Um, but yeah, I, I'm looking forward to it. I think the V2 is obviously, that was my choice in the LNR battles for the uh, mixed traffic loco, I think off the top of my head. Um and I think, yeah, I think the V2s are absolutely gorgeous. So in Engage, uh, I mean, it's going to be a delightful addition to any sort of London Northeastern modeler or even Southern modeler. As, as I say, if you're doing um, around the BR era, they they did venture that way. So you can have them on your expresses uh, when the merchant navies were taken out of action for a small period of time. Uh, and um, yeah, there was even, I believe, one that made it all the way to Swindon and was hanging around there for a bit. Most modellers should have an excuse to at least have one, I'd say, if you're a BR Steam era modeller anyway. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think that, that, absolutely fantastic models. Uh, looking forward to seeing uh, painted examples coming in the future. Yeah, I think one of the things that I picked up the most on is we, we talk a lot uh, about, or maybe we don't necessarily talk about it as much, but traction tyres. Um, these models are coming with no traction tires, but they will come with a traction tire variant uh, in the um, accessories pack in in there. So if you do find that you're not getting the traction that you need with this loco, it will have the ability to swap out the wheel set and put one of the uh, traction tire variants on there, which I think is a nice little detail. Rather than putting traction tires on there automatically and then mm. uh, you then having to go out and buy a spare wheel set, which is often the case, the ability for it to come with a traction tire replacement set sounds quite good in my eyes. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, they're, they're sort of they're not the most popular uh, choice with modelers, are they? The traction tires and sort of uh, people sort of uh, despise them, I suppose. The dirt they put on the rails and and they sort of take away the look of the loco, especially when you weather it and you've got all those nice shiny wheel rims in that sort of murky brown dirt. And then you've got the one wheel that's just got that brown vulcanized rubber going around <laughs> it that spoils the effect. <laughs> yeah, it, it can spoil the effect a lot. I, I get that. But um, I thought that was a nice little um, accessory, a little thing that they're doing in it to help help their customers, I guess. So, yeah, kudos to Backman and Graham Farish for doing that. And as I say, the video was fairly short and I, I liked it. It was compact enough that you didn't necessarily i mean 17 minutes for the full thing so um i watched it after the fact and was able to skip through it but yeah i thought 17 minutes for the whole thing was pre pretty small in comparison to some of the other announcements that we get yeah that's i mean that's about the right size for a video isn't it, of a product of a product announcement um you don't you don't want to bombard people and just a nice little snippet of video just enough information to know what you're doing about the product because like you say, if you, if, you, if you do too much, people are going to get bored and switch off. And then you might announce all your nice little innovations at the end of it, along with the product. And no one's paying attention because they're just sat there for ages going, what, what are you making? What are you making? Oh, I'm making that, are you? Oh, great. And then just wander off kind of thing. So um, I'll be honest, I haven't actually got around to watching the video yet because um, I've been sleeping. But um... <laughs> um, I mean, what they did do during the stream was they put up pictures of the the current version of it and you could see how outdated it was and then they showed um some of the unliveried versions of it on the screen and it looked gorgeous and it was a really good way of showing you how much it's changed and i think that's something that would also benefit going forward if you do have an older tooling of something you can show it up on the screen and show how out of date that tooling has become yeah, that's. I think I think that would definitely show. As I say, because I, I I'm pretty certain that the tooling is the original um, uh, Graham Farish pool tooling um, when when they used to be made over here. So um, that that probably be a very interesting comparison. I do wonder though why Graham Farish have never ventured down the same path as what Hornby did with Railroad, in which if you have the old tooling and it's still available, why not make a more robust engine for different market because 
it's kind of like the same with TT. Horn Hornby's idea of TT is people don't have space for model railways, therefore they're doing a smaller scale to try and get people in to the hobby. I've always wondered why Engage has never tried to tempt people into that scale because, let's face it, it's more ideal in the fact that it isn't going to take up so much room. And I, I do wonder why we've never seen, you know, old tooling reused in, in a railroad style product that may you know entice uh starter modelers younger modelers uh, in, into the hobby and into that scale yeah it's a, it's a very valid point maybe maybe in the future they will put it on a postcard and address it to them but likewise it does look very very nice so if you're an n-scale modeler and especially if you're an l and er then this, this might be the one for you definitely indeed um i think that's pretty much it for news otherwise but product wise um i think this is the usual bargains and announcements going on i think uh rails of sheffield have got some uh backman double o bargains going on at the moment including a, for a, a br standard 5mt at 129 pound 50 which is a pretty good price i'd say i think 150 at 179.50 in the old um provincial uh br sort of livery some of their 47s are reaching prices of 139 pound 50 which is uh a steel, I'd say. So uh, well, that one's good. Long time we got anything else? Um, well, I, I just wanted to point out that on that list, there's also a DCC sound version of one of those 47s for £219.50, which also feels like an absolute steal for a, oh, yeah, a yeah. sound-fitted brand-new Backman 47. So, yeah, other, other than that, that's we've had the... There's been a lot of... Uh, deals that have come out this week but none as good as that one and funnily enough that one landed in our boxes just as we were getting ready to record so um that's good timing on that one indeed yeah i think i think this time of year is usually a good time to sort of keep an eye out for deals because i like the lights of model rails direct um I, I definitely remember july last year they had a massive sale and um it was very very hard to resist everything they had in the sale i think i bought a 91 in the end but um yeah this, i think this time of year is usually a good time of year if you're, you're looking for a deal there's usually something about to come this way sort of thing that's it otherwise the only other thing i want to say is um a big thank you to akira scale i think i mentioned it on the show uh, i got the car 66s and uh got 66004 and the boy accidentally knocked it on the floor and uh, he broke bits off it and it got very damaged, um, which was very annoying because it hadn't even turned a wheel at that point. Um, so I wrote to Acura Scale and I asked them for the spare parts and their customer service was really good. They got back to me straight away. They asked what bits, they asked for photos. I showed them, I told them, I said what happened. Uh, and they said, yep, yeah, don't worry. Just give us, give us some time with all those parts in. We'll let you know when they're coming. And the other day I got an email, said the parts were on the way. And before I even had a chance to reply and say, how much do I owe you? They had arrived at my house um, free of charge to repair the loco. And so I want to thank Curascale for some excellent customer service. You know, it, it, you know, it wasn't their fault. It got broke. They didn't have to do that. And, and yet they still, you know, out of their own pocket, supply me the parts so I could fix uh, one of their wonderful locos. So thank you very much, Curascale, if you're listening. That is top top level customer service and i think that should be applauded so well i think we'll take a short break now and uh, we'll move on to our interview with Trin. look at that you see that there the super shiny diesel loco that's coming this way yeah i see it isn't it beautiful so fresh, so clean, like it's straight out of the box. I mean, yeah, it's nice, but I prefer it to have a used look to it. In an ideal world, that would be nice, but I'm sure the owner doesn't have the confidence, skill or time to undertake such a job. Then why don't they just send it to Emperor's Path? Emperor's Path? Yeah, SBJ has years of experience in model railways and wargaming. The ability to meet your weathering needs and works with you during the whole process to ensure the project is how you want it, not like it's come through a factory. Come on, that must cost a fortune. Not really. He offers different levels of weathering at really affordable prices. 
I've got my whole fleet weathered by him. My loco has got the full treatment, whilst my rolling stock just a dusting with the airbrush, and it looks really authentic. I might just get a quote. How do I contact him? You get him on Instagram, at Emperor's underscore path, by Facebook, Emperor's Path, or Emperor's Path Contact at gmail.com. Emperor's Path Weathering. If it's not filthy, let's change that. And we are back. And today we have another guest for our interview session. Today's guest is a YouTuber with 13.8 thousand subscribers. So he's uh, hitting the big numbers here. Uh, I'd like to welcome to the show Tris from Double O Neil. Hello, Tris. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. You made it sound like it was a big number. Thank you. He's, he's, he's compared to me and Sam. I mean, I'm, I've got more than Sam. That's why I like to always let him know. I guess it's all relative, right? <laughs> yeah, that's it. As long as everyone's enjoying it, that's that's the main part, isn't it? Well, I don't it's think sad. so. You only have to keep one person happy out there, do you? So it's, um, you, like, you know when we go to one of our shows and you bump into someone that might have seen something that you've done and they tell you, hey, you know, I enjoy the channel and they tell you about one in particular they enjoyed. You think, oh, okay, that, that's good. Oh, you, know, you can settle down a bit. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, it's always nice to get that, that feedback, isn't it? Mm. Um, so those who aren't listening that aren't aware, um, I'd be very surprised. But uh, Tris, uh, would you like to tell people a little bit about your channel? Yeah, so obviously W Neil is the name. Neil is my last name. People often think my name is Neil, but it's Tris or Tristram for long. Um, I got into the hobby originally when I was a little boy, as quite a few of us. Um, and turning towards my 30s, um, I kind of wanted to get a bit closer to my my dad and my brother who talk about modern railways at Christmas and, and railways in general. So with that, I just thought, well, you know, dad, have you got my railway bits from when I was younger? So then I got those, potted around with them for, I don't know, a few months, got bits here and there, didn't really get into it. And then I had another YouTube channel and I kind of was used to filming and so I was up in the loft because I went to the NEC and enjoyed obviously the Wardy show that was on which was stunning and I got home that day straight in the loft and I started building the railway and that was my first video so if you go on my channel and go and check that out that's basically the the first foray into it like as, as a, an adult properly um and from that like people watched the video and I was like You're crazy they don't want to watch me do this and I did more videos and actually over time it's it's been a mixture of my discovery of the hobby again um and trying to be not coming across as a form of expert to tell you this is how you do it um, but more to share me learning and possibly getting better at things in and trying to help people that will have the same difficulties that I had at the beginning it's quite a scary hobby in some areas because you look at the work that people have done and genuinely pretty stunning and you think oh, i can't possibly do that but actually so many things you can do that you put together and and, and some will look at that and let's say they're not even into the hobby they'll go oh that looks great and you think well yeah it does it does and um so the channel's been about that the other bits is as i'm an engineer by trade so doing CAD and things I like making things so 3D printing I got into that quite early like in COVID got a 3D printer um, and I used bits for work to do that so I was quite fluent with it um, and over time I kind of made little locos and buildings and just all sorts of bits um, and that's been very satisfying because you've got an idea and then you turn it into something real so that's kind of that's kind of the channel really and i do my podcast with tony tony's trains in rugby he's been a really good friend uh, getting to know him through the shop and uh um, obviously going to see steam railways i share that as well that's not so popular on the channel like you put them up and doing a new layout so i think that kind of sums up the channel to a certain degree and um i'm kind of proud of it i say kind of no i am i am proud of it and it's been growing uh we all dream to have this huge channel like your competitors that are out there or uh, fellow uh, creators um but i think no matter how big your channel gets if i had fifty thousand subscribers i'd want to have the hundred thousand you know i'd want to be the biggest one but then if you got there would you truly be happy and probably not it's about enjoying the hobby and this is my way of sharing my hobby yeah definitely you know it's, it i think that's what's so nice about your channel it, it's your journey through modeling um and how, you, how you've progressed through it and that's why i like um to watch it and that's what i enjoy about it and i think that's probably what brings people back to the channel 
And yeah, you're definitely right. I think you can always aim for those big numbers, but that's a lot of, it, it, I think all three of us know it's a lot of effort and a lot of hard work putting those videos together. And oh. just, just to get a hundred views, is just mm. good enough. Times, isn't it? <laughs> so. Yeah. It's, it's quite exciting when you, you, you do a video sometimes that was kind of like an easy one and it goes really well. And you're like, Oh, I didn't think so many people watched that. And you, but YouTube's not very kind to us because uh, we get excited about something and we try and repeat the same thing and that video flops and you go, oh, okay. Oh, okay. Well, what did I do wrong there? And, and, and it, you put a certain, certain pressure on yourself, which isn't yeah. healthy. But I try to remind myself that when I had 100 subscribers, oh, I'd be cool if I had 1,000 or 2,000. And when I got to 5,000, that was cool. And then it was that dream of getting to 10. And you get to 10, you're like, oh, don't know where I am now because... 15 is only another five up, but that's half of the way from the 5,000. Um, and you then realize that I would just want to do stuff that I enjoy. And then you do some of them. And again, the videos might not do so well, or some might do well. You might do a video about something a bit random and people love it. And you're like, okay, I've, I've clicked on something there. Like lately I did my uh, shunting yard layout. Yeah, I think the words shunting yard layout pricks up every single person's ears within the moderary industry we all love a shunting yard um and i was like oh okay people are watching this and the same people are coming back it was showing me and i thought okay and also the americans are watching it okay. so i'd have a boost to the video views um kind of like 18 hours later when they get into their evenings or whatever um they'd yeah. kind of miss the initial bit and then it must flag up and maybe go on a forum and i get this little spike in america and i thought oh okay so um yeah it's it's interesting you could just do videos about things you know will work but then you wouldn't be satisfied right? yeah definitely so that, that I suppose that brings us to our, our first question that we always like to ask because if you've got your shunting layout which is mm -hmm. diesel based and then you've obviously got your layout that you've been working up in the loft which is steam based so as we yes. always are first question is uh what is your favorite form of attraction is it steam diesel or electric does it have to be like a yes, no answer, or can I be more in depth? Yeah, I'm afraid Sam makes you choose one. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> Steam then, if I had to pick one. Steam, excellent. Steam was falling behind, so you're helping chalk it up on the board there. It's, uh... yeah, it just it makes your heart pump when you hear it. It's it, it's brilliant. Yeah, definitely. I I, I mean I, I mean I chose diesel obviously, but um, yeah, there's there is that. There's something so special about steam, isn't there? That mm. you just can't quite uh, get using an electric. Yeah, well, the one the one thing I will say is um, I went to the the Midhance Railway and you know, the Basingstoke, obviously, Alton direction. And um, there was a Class 50 pulled in and basically the engine's throbbing away and it's vibrating through your body. And you're just yeah. like, my oh, word, that's awesome. Um, <laughs> and off it goes and it starts roaring away and it's gently pulling away. And you're just like, well, that's power that is, you know. So then it was around that time i started finding diesels a bit more attractive um and even the ugly ones that before ugly you're like well it looks nice but i'll be with my girlfriend and she's like oh that's an ugly my like, no no that's, it's nice that is and start like explaining about it and yeah so yeah they just full on electric doesn't do anything for me i will say um but yeah so i'm, I'm a steam one at heart really yeah that's fair enough that's fair enough but yeah i don't totally agree with you the class 50 that was um i was never never a a massive fan of them like like you say until you see one in real life and then you hear mm. that engine and life just fall in love with them like yeah i think that's one of the best things about trains in general is you get this euphoric like uh this adrenaline surge this dopamine mm. hit the second whether it's steam diesel i mean electric doesn't necessarily have the same same sort of noise as the diesels and the electrics but sorry as the diesels and the steam but i, I think it's that thing of it just hits you with something mm. when you see it or hear it in person and like you hear a whistle or a horn in in the distance and you suddenly like you turn your head so quickly because mm. you just want to see what's created that um feeling in you and i think that's definitely one of the best things about trains in general and yeah definitely. i agree i mean where i am i'm quite fortunate i'm near a railway line so when i do hear certain sounds and i go oh that sounds different it's a, <laughs> it's a quick dash down the road just to make sure i can uh, catch a glimpse of uh, what's going by so but yeah it's always, oh, nice. always fine just to watch even if you only get to see it through the trees but um so we move on to our next question i know that obviously you mostly model in double o but you've also had a little dabble in um double o nine um and we always ask uh, what is your favorite scale obviously i don't i i have one 
a box fan that I built in this, um, which is one of the Pico ones, is O Gauge for me. Um, it it kind of uh, get you know kind of your taste buds get going when I see O Gauge. Um, you don't see it so often. It's it was let's say an expensive route into the hobby um but yeah. it's got better like dapol with their 14xx they do their pannier and they got terrier um there's obviously then the lion heart range that have come out and these i would like to say more affordable okay it's like none of this stuff is cheap it's not like yeah. loose change in your pocket but you think mm, actually with the price of double o i could get into this so i've always liked the look of o gauge um i'd love to have something like that um but yeah so i'd say that's my favorite obviously i collect double o because that's what i started with and it's extremely accessible yeah no that's uh joe you know, that's a great answer because usually someone says that it's the scale that they work in but it, you know and you said you've got the box fan believe it's something you don't work in but um obviously we've been talking a lot about o gauge over this series and it is such a beautiful scale um mm. I'm same i've picked up the fourteen XX as Rails had it in a sale. I've uh, I've got a box fan nice. kit to have a go at. Um, if I actually get a layout built or not is another question. But it, I, yeah, I love watching O Gauge. There's just something about it. I don't know. Maybe yeah. it's the size of it makes you feel that you're more immersed in that world. So we'll go back to O Gauge because uh, you just got the box fan, and I'll ask you the question: uh, <laughs> What's your favourite loco that you own? Yeah, I was like to ever think about this because you you put the questions through before, and I um. I was trying to think because you know you you basically buy each loco you buy becomes your favorite, isn't it? Like you're kind of looking forward to getting it, um, and normally it's like the biggest one that you've got. Um, but I think it's the humble pannier, uh, like the sixty four, because it's got uh, the more square uh, windows on it. Um, so yeah, the just a Great Western Railway. There's a G W and R written on the side. Um, obviously, lovely green pannier, really sixty four X X. So. I'd say that's my favourite. Um, always has been and probably always will be. Every time I see one, I kind of I get excited. It's got a good bark to it. Um, I think it's, uh, yeah, it's my favourite looking loco. Okay. Yeah, I can't blame you there. I, I love a pannier. Uh, just, mm. just, uh, I really, I think it's that shape as well of them because it's, mm -hmm. it's not quite the standard, isn't it? But um, there's something about them. And obviously, if you model Great Western, you have to have a pannier because like, oh, yeah. Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> yeah, I like that answer a lot. Um, so that's your favourite loco that you own. Uh, yes. Is there a favourite loco that you don't own? It's a good question. Um, and it's not in scale based, or no, I guess it, within the scale that I hop, uh, you know, that I have. Um, I've I've always wanted to get like a mallard, like a high quality mallard. Um, obviously the A4. So it's it's an iconic one, but I've never had a reason to really get one. I've been working through my my hit list of. Uh, locos that i'd like and i've got one of everything i haven't got a 47 uh, i was a class 47 obviously the diesel um so they're the two locos that i'd like to get sometime um but i've got most of the things that i i like but that that would be that but the 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 kind of the real answer to it is a no gauge pannier <laughs> to, to go to, <laughs> um you know one i don't own um i'd be very happy to get one yeah that's a very good answer i do like that mm. i don't want to tempt you or anything but um Daypole just sent out their um, July um, sale items. They do have them. Yeah. Two hundred and fifty pounds. Just, just saying. <laughs> well, I think I'm in the same boat as you. Actually, I don't actually own a forty-seven. I keep looking at them, but I can't think of a reason why why I need one. And, and yeah. the same with Mallard because I, I love an A4. I think they're absolutely mm. beautiful locos. But again, it's trying to find that reason of why you'd want one. And um, I suppose if you you know when you're concentrating on Great Western, it's, it's a lot harder to find that excuse, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Well, I'll find an excuse one day. Yeah, figure it out. Um, but yeah, there's there's so many offerings out there, um, especially the more modern ones of sound in the DCC, and just yeah, um, I just yeah, I just keep waiting until there's one up a bit cheaper, um, and go from there. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, I think I think it's all the dream for us. Yeah, to have some mm. okay. Right then, so as you you mean you talked about it earlier, like your your three D printing, and I I always found that um absolutely fascinating because I can't get my head around it, and I've never really okay. understood. It. So watching you make it on YouTube is brilliant, and and I think mm. it, you were invited to write that article Hornby Magazine as well from the station building. Am I right in thinking that? Yeah, I did too. So I did 
the the kitchen is based off kind of Budley. Obviously, it's it's wildly different if you spend time looking at the two. Um, but it was that kind of the right kind of look, and it fitted on my layouts. It, it's still under scale, though. Actually, it was kind of more for HO. Um, I, I made it too small to begin with, but it looks right on the layout. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I did that, and I did one for an O four O kind of concept pannier, um, for three D printing yeah. for that one, which was cool. Um, so I enjoyed doing that. Um, so yeah, that was. That was cool and, and kind of daunting um, and, and wonderful to then see in the, the magazine. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. That was cool. I got the two magazines on my shelf and very proud of myself. <laughs> yeah, that's no, quite the achievement. So um, I, I, we always ask, you know, what is your favourite project? Is it one of those or do you have something else that you, you're quite proud of that you've worked on? Um, so my, my favourite project is, so I did the 009 um, uh, Why Not Veil uh, which is obviously Tony backwards for my Statfile barn layout that I went in and exhibited, which was cool. That was the first ever time doing that kind of thing. It was very daunting and Tony set me a task and that was that was fun. And people engaged very much with the series and me when I went to the show. So that's been probably the most rewarding one because I, I got to yeah interact with people. Um, that was nice. And the the part of it that I enjoyed the most because they were individual projects was doing the bridge um, using balsa wood, making all the trestles and building it up and making it look similar to the one at the Vale of Idol. And then to finish it all off, I eventually went to the Vale of Idol um, and I got to, you know, go up well, the Vale, um, up that mountain. And then it's fantastic. I went with uh, Joey and uh, Tony from Tony's Trains and um, they're two good friends and, yeah, we got chatting to a guy called Jack that works there. He was driving the train. They let me jump on the loco um, and we went to fill up with water. And, I, you know, that was cool. Um, and he, he explained lots of things. I did a nice video for it and thoroughly um, soaked that one in. Uh, yeah, yeah, that experience. So that project's been the favorite one that I've done within the channel. Um, it, the, my, the side one that was also my favorite was doing that over Opania um i did that twice i uh, did a photo at chassis for it the first one i did by machine the chassis um spent ages drawing the body and um then printing it and trying went through so many prints to get it working um but it was this beautiful little cute loco really really happy to to have done those two projects that's cool yeah i i, I remember you, you your um 009 project and i really do love the bridge because i also looked at that and considered it um as for the bridge for my layout watching you make it and it's come to life i was like oh i wish i'd done that because it oh. looks so good then like, you've done an absolutely great job on there and yeah and i did really enjoy watching you, and you actually go off and then see the real real thing at the, at the yeah. end of the so that's it, quite cool. it, it honestly was a nice cap to, to the whole project to if it was a tv series it could be the way that it'd be done you know you do something and then you go and see it or you'll probably see it at the beginning really do your research and then come back and do it um but some bits i i i got most of my information from the books um i got i got a big book fairly right old book off ebay for not too much um and i hunted through that for the pictures and looked online and and joey sent me certain pictures because he knew a lot about the line yeah, um, and then eventually I went there and oh cool, there's this, and I started measuring things up because one part of the layout I hadn't quite finished, um, and so I was able to measure things up and improve bits. There was a water tower there, and I was able to kind of roughly measure up water tower based on how big I am, and have a picture next to it so I could engage it for the project. So that was nice. It was fun. Yeah, that's cool. I like that. Yes. Yeah, and I really, I really enjoyed that. And yeah, you say again, your your O four O little pannier tank, such a unusual concept. It was mm. obviously completely fictional, but it does look so right. It's, yeah. Uh, so yeah, like you say, that cute little tank engine. Yeah. So obviously, uh, you like to shop at Tony's a lot, um, as as we all do. I like to go visit Tony myself every now and then. Um, oh, nice. Have you got any planned hobby purchases from Tony's in the future? At the moment, I've got so much that I've not done anything with. So, like recently, I got hold of a Percy um, N gauge, so I can rip the body off and put, you know, a double nine um, body on it. Um, I, I honestly don't know what I'd, I'd get from that. I'm kind of having a, a small break from buying lots of things. So, Tony's seen us like lull in my um, expenditure um, at his shop. Um, 
but it's like the Mark II coaches that Akira Scared have done. They're probably oh, be, yeah. it'll probably be out to them by the time I go and get one. But I'd like a couple of them because I there's something about them. It's almost like it's an honor thing to have a Mark II. Um, so yeah, that's that's I think Mark II coaches are my kind of things that I want to get next. Nothing too exciting. That's fine. That's fine. We don't mind. We don't mind that because yeah, you know, we say we've asked people before. Like you know, it doesn't have to be a low coat, it can be a paintbrush. Mm. Um, yeah. I think which possibly Mitch's answer a um, couple of weeks ago, but um, yeah, it's. Uh, I think the Mark II is a good choice. They're very, very nice coaches. So curious, mm-hmm. I've got a couple myself. Um, yeah. they really, I mean, curious, I do up the game every time they bring something out. So yeah, they're on it at the moment. Absolutely on it, which is cool. Keeps the yeah. hobby interesting because all the manufacturers are kind of having to step up all the time. So yeah. that's good. Yeah, definitely. That's what I mean. I know a lot of people have been getting quite like upset about the duplication of the class 60, but I, I've said it on here and I've sort of spoken to the guys at Carisco and I said, I, I, I think the winners are us as, as the customer because mm-hmm. you're going up against Cavalex and let's face it, their 56 was absolutely amazing. Yeah. So, you know, now, Curiscale, who are also, I think, a brilliant manufacturer, now go up their game. And I think at the end of the day, we are going to be the winners with, you know, these in- innovative, uh, great models that the, yeah. the two companies bring out. So that's right. It, the future looks good for the hobby, I'd say. I'd like to think so. Um, when you go to shows, I'm seeing more and more kind of our age group and some younger um, yes. when, when you go, which is good. Um, there's one one thing with doing the channel it's to show others my age and and younger coming to the hobby it's it, it's been stereotypically of of an older generation and there's nothing wrong with that because we you understand why you know my granddad did this and my dad's into it my dad's been into it since he was young um mm. but you go to a lot of shows and it's generally um the, the the age groups are higher like the people that watch my channel the most amount of people that watch my channel are 65 plus so I'm like, okay, so I appeal to that, but that's also the main audience. And then you have 45 to 55 or 54, whatever the brackets are, as the next 20%. And you yeah. have the age groups as you go down. So it's nice to see actually more and more kind of, I guess I'm getting into more towards the age group. I'm 37 now. So um, you imagine kind of people that have a bit more disposable income. I've always fancied doing it now. I've got some money. I've got a bit of room. I can do it um and there's there's a window an age group or that currently don't really get into it either because maybe in their eyes it's not very cool and when they get older they forget well they realize actually it doesn't matter what anyone else thinks and you get into it um so i think the the hobbies hopefully well i'm hoping it's growing in the right way in the right direction the only bit i get scared of with the hobby is the kind of the price of everything um it kind of slows you down and you go to a shop and you want to spend 20 quid and what what can i buy for that um yeah so but obviously there's lots of ways into this hobby i'm kind of tangenting off there aren't i yeah no that's fine i i totally agree there's um, there's two things that worry me about the future and yeah you say like you say the price of models is one of them and also the manufacturers might disappear by the time i hit retirement age and that's mm. that's that's my biggest fear because I was like, "What the hell am I going to do if I retire?" And I can't <laughs> find <it. laughs> I finally Wait. got the disposable income for the expensive models, but they're gone. But, no. Yeah, no, I agree. I I noticed that recently at exhibitions, there are a lot more younger people turning up. Um, and hopefully, they are getting to the hobby, and, and like you say, they're finding ways of making that twenty pounds go far and get them into the hobby because yeah it is an expensive hobby but we were all there at the beginning mm-hmm. where you get all the models in the shop and you want to buy this you want to buy that and you just have to make that sacrifice and go well, actually i'll just start off with a tank engine mm-hmm. and a couple of, just do a little shunting layer and, and just build and, it up from there isn't it you know? yeah yeah and you're very grateful for those things aren't you when i i got a metal 1366 pannier over the outside cylinders on um when I was first getting back into the hobby and that excited me because I didn't realize they did one. Um, and it was a, like a white metal kit brush chassis. And, mm. uh, that was very exciting. And that, I think I paid 70 pounds for that. And that felt like a big purchase at the time. And, and you know, it was, yeah. And, and I kind of built up, like you say, you, you get wagons and they're between, if you go to a show between five to 18 from a old one to a, let's say a new one, um, so yeah, you can build up quite a collection at low budget. You just have to accept you're not going to have, um, you know, well the mallard with all the super detail with sound DCC. Um, you've got to be realistic, like any hobby, um, I guess. 
Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah, and that that's the kind of thing. Where I think maybe modeling needs to be a bit more encouraged there. Where you go, well, you know, you can't have that mallard, but you can have the railroad one. And if you mm. look around, uh, such and such does this detail bit. This person does this detail bit, and you can yeah. tag it a really nice model. Just, just put that little bit of extra effort into it. Mm. And um, I think that's something you've covered in your channel before, isn't it? I remember you did the fourteen XX. That uh, oh, I love that one. And I, I did, I did the fourteen XX, but I also did the um, the O four O um oh i forget what it's called um it's it's the one that you get part of the train sets when you when you get them um the and, yeah the one i want and i added I, I i all the molded details i chopped all that off i put handrails on and just all the bits that it was missing and i loved that one and that got a lot of interest which was cool but yeah so both the 14xx and the 101 that was that was cool actually because it shows you 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 could really make your model look like a you know go buy a modern one um to, to that level of detail um yeah it's the, the only thing that limits you is your public determination you can do it if you want to yeah that's it yeah i think everything sound like when we're talking to danny the other week you know he's told us stories of models he's had a go at that have ended up in the scrap bin and that and uh, mm. you know but he, he said you know it's practice and perseverance and sometimes you get there and sometimes you don't and i think mm. that's that's the important thing for people to remember, isn't it? So with all these various um, projects that you've sort of encountered and taken on over time, and you've done many things when watching your channel, um, what is your favourite part of the hobby? I guess you can't really pin down one in particular thing. Um, the the bit that I like about the hobby is the ability to take my mind to a different place, to get into that, let's call it, seven-year-old self. Um, and... You know, as a, as adults, obviously we mature and we get to this point where you're not meant to behave in a certain way. You're not meant to think that way. But actually, I think as you get older as an adult, we realise that we're all 12 years old inside and that all the things that we love back then, we love now. And so when I get the locos running, I get it moving and I'm watching the coaches get pulled and the gap grow between each one because obviously the, the hooks are getting taken up and the loco pulls off, or I put sound on, that gets the same person that's 12 years old excited um, as me now. And 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 I love that part of the hobby um, because, I don't know, it, it, it's sometimes hard to stimulate yourself in this world with social media, movies, everything, internet access. The mind being creative and enjoying this hobby is very powerful to making you happy um and satisfying you and kind of putting a smile on your face that other people don't get to see it's kind of quite a solitary hobby um yeah. you know you know you don't get to oh yeah you can get a friend come around and let's call it play trains um but you don't often get to do that so it's a very nice thing to do uh, as a hobby so i'd say that's the way about the hobby the way it takes me to a, a nice place yeah, do you know, I, I totally agree with that. It's, um, as I say, like this week, or the last few weeks, we, we've managed to run trains around the room here. And the mm. most satisfaction I've got from it is watching my son play with the trains and run the trains. Yeah. And I look at him and I go, that, that's, you know, that's how I was when I was a kid when I was mm. playing with my dad's train set. It was so exciting. You were just immersed in this world. And I can see, I can see him doing it. He's, he's putting his head to the track. He's watching the trains <laughs> go around. And, you know, he's lining everything up. And, uh, yeah. And I was like, do you know what? This did take me six months to get here, but just to see that, it's not even it's not even me playing with it, it's him playing yeah. with it. It's such a pleasure yeah. to watch. What else uh, could you give him that would match that, you know? Uh, that, yeah. that's it's it's quite a special thing. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. I mean I can give them the Nintendo and watch them build something in Minecraft, but you know, it's it's <laughs> near satisfying. Uh, excellent stuff. So I'll move on to the next question. And this one seems a bit loaded, really, because obviously you start many new projects um, with layout, various layouts and that. But um, if you were to start a new layout, um, what is the one thing that you'd need on it? Uh, my my heart of hearts is an engine shed, a big engine shed, so I can put everything inside it. Because any railway you go and visit, the the hottest place to go to is the the engine shed, and that gets my yeah, juices going really. Um, and Every time I've done a layout, I want to somehow factor a, an engine shed in some way, even if it's small. So I've got one little one to poke its nose out and then I can fill it up with coal and water because that's by, um, even if it wouldn't really work. Uh, that, that's my thing. So engine shed is my my go-to. Um, and then actually, I'm, I'm going to 
I'm going to add a, a, a B option on there, which is turntable. Everyone gets going with a turntable. We all want one, um, <laughs> one that's working and it works perfectly. Uh, my dad has one on his layout. And as a boy, every time he got it going, it was exciting. Do um, you want to go turn the loco around and drive it off? Yeah, definitely. Oh, I like those. Yeah, mm. I think a yeah, shed or a depot is quite a common answer. I think people can mm. come up and it's is that advantage that yeah you can show off your locos and put them on display because the, the worst thing is is stick them in the fiddle yard where, where they're not being appreciated in the scenery yeah and, um yeah I, I i can see that and definitely a great western shed because obviously yeah. the lovely great western locos on display mm. <laughs> i am um, i think with the turntable even as someone who whilst i like steam and i prefer prefer diesel i still love the idea of a turntable and i think it does like go back to the origins of everyone sort of getting involved because of thomas and it's that very yes. iconic scene of having the turntable with the shed there's plenty mm. of stories that revolve around the turntable and it's that thing yeah. of having it in such a small space um and, and i even like i've, I've got an in progress a condensed version of Old Oak Common. And the reason I wanted to do Old Oak Common was because it had diesels, but a turntable as well, which was completely unseen. And I think it's that thing of having a turntable makes you feel like you've got this amazing thing on oh, your layout. It's so a having... spectacle, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, especially if you can like get, get it all motorized and worked up. I mean, I've seen some at shows where some of them are motorized, um, where it's an on and off button i've seen one where it's a crank handle and i've seen and the one i've got up ready for installation when i can be bothered is i've got a dcc one that is programmed to each individual section on it and oh, you just nice. pick pick which one you go to so there's so many different varieties of what you can go with and by having a turntable you can effectively have that nice big engine shed to go with it as well so yeah i, th I think it's a fantastic choice i draw i think is the best one is the turntable in the engine shed when you've got the roundhouse like oh. i think yeah, it's called Oak Road. I think um, the O Gauge one of the Great Western. Yes, I think that's the name of it. I mean, that's one of my favourite layouts on the exhibition scene, um, just because of that gloomy shed over that turntable, and you just sat mm. and stand there and just watch a loco just being turned around in there. It's just so evocative. I think. Yeah, I like those answers. I do like those answers, and uh, I've got to agree with you there. It's you know, shed. It's definitely something that a layout needs. We'll move on to what is the one hobby item you'd encourage everyone to buy? I was thinking about this because obviously it's obviously whatever town you live in, uh, sometimes they might have read a railway that you didn't know about. Um, so I live in Kettering and up until recently, I didn't realise that we had a turntable at the where the station is. It's not there now. Um, I only found that because I was in Market Harbour and the next town along and I was in the library um, part of this museum. And I found a book that was on the Kettering Railway and that blows my mind. So it's kind of finding an old book which shows railways that are local to you because it can inspire you and to do a layout based on that. If not, just keep encouraging the hobby. I think books are they're readily available and very cheap within this hobby. So, yeah, just just buy a book that's on something to do you're interested in from from back back in the day uh, that's my thing um it's not quite a hobby item in regards to letting you you know do the hobby um in that way but it's a fantastic well, resource i guess yeah no I, I totally agree um i've got a bookcase absolutely full of books that i've bought over the years for inspiration or ideas or, or, or i mean one of the things i like so much about railways is just how they got built, how they ended up there. And like you say, when you read a book and you find something that you didn't realise existed before, mm. so fascinating. You go, I never knew that was there. Yeah. Like uh, the, the one for me is the Woodstock branch just coming uh, out of north of Oxford. Okay. Uh, the, the, the road between um, Banbury and Oxford, I've driven up that hundreds of times and i never realized that i was driving past the old branch line the old bridge oh had no idea until like you say you open a book and went is that where that bridge is <laughs> oh God, never really oh. <laughs> and it is uh, it was the same it was the same i used to live back home in bedford it was the bedford mm. Upton line there was a, again another bit of you went over a bit of an odd structure there and then, and then to learn that actually that was part of that branch line and that that one's more more of an interest in the fact that my um uh great uncle was uh was a fireman on there so you know, oh, yeah that's wonderful i, no, I totally agree with you there they are definitely an excellent uh resource and um yeah 
modelers should invest in books yes i I think uh the james has spoken about them before but the middleton press books are a fantastic thing to get lost in because they're all very they're all based on a particular area and i think they're fantastic if you're looking to model a particular area or you live in an area you can have a look through these books and you can see the the old railway that used to be there what used to run on it oh well that's now just a, a single crossing over into that bit well actually it used to be this massive network of points and things from years ago i'm guilty i mean no no shock here My, i i've got the uh, Portsmouth to Southampton Middleton Press book and then the Portsmouth mm. to Chichester book and they're just fantastic books to go well I know the local area and I can go oh well uh, admittedly not really anything has changed in the A to B side of it but what happened along the line or what used to be there where that was originally a level crossing there's now a bridge there's now a Sainsbury's there's all these like amazing looking things and I think yeah the ability to go out and buy if you if i could recommend anything a middleton press book really yeah. helps you identify not only what's in the area but what ran there from x year to another year so you you can get this massive massive thing to to look at so yeah i agree with that they are excellent books yeah i mean yeah, everyone needs at least one middleton press book <laughs> in that <section>, don't know. <laughs> mm. awesome stuff um so obviously with the channel, we know that you go out to a lot of exhibitions um, and you tend to record them and sort of go around and have a chat with people. And uh, it's always very uh, great to watch. And um, so we always like to ask, you know, what is your favourite exhibition? And going along with that, what is your favourite layout? And when we say favourite layout, it doesn't have to be an exhibition. It can be something that you've seen on YouTube. It could be uh, something you've seen in a museum. Maybe you've been lucky mm-hmm. enough to... What is what are your what are your favourites? Okay, so exhibition, um, Stadtfeld Barn uh, was my favourite one. Um, I had the most fun when I went there, so because I I exhibited at the exhibition, um, I did a video for it and shared all that. Um, I got to go on the loco as we went for basically all the people that are exhibitors or content creators that came along. We all jumped on the locos because they have the locos running there which is cool um and we went on that and uh, i was with joey and um i did the guy that was also driving on the train or the loco say train um and we went there and it was just a laugh because it was very loud and the obviously putting on the whistle and it was just great and i met um laurie from laurie's mechanical marvels um there, oh, yeah. which is nice so we've been kind of talking ever since which has been nice um and so i just kind of made quite a few friends there and it was um, like my cousin came as well on one of the days to help me run the layout. And then Andy um, Hudson, um, who now works at Pico, um, he came along as well to, to help me run um, a little bit as well. So and my friend Zach came along. So it was just quite an experience, that one. Uh, so thoroughly enjoyed that. And I'd love to go and do that again. It's just work always falls on that weekend because I do a lot of work on the weekend. So that was my favourite one. And, and if I can... Um, the Wally show back in 2018, I think was when I, yeah, kind of got back into the hobby. It was 2019. I can't remember <laughs> one or the other. Um, <laughs> that, that was very good for me. And, and it kind of, it inspires you. I've seen all those layouts in a big scale. Um, as for layouts, it's my, my dad's layout. Um, he obviously he's had that since I was basically born. Uh, he's been working on it. Um, and I've watched it kind of grow as a layout. I didn't see half it getting built because I was probably a toddler when he'd built half of it. Um, but that had been at our old house when we lived down in, in Reading. We lived in a place called Tilehurst down there. Um, and that was up in the loft. And then when we moved to Tally, which is um, yeah, not far from Reading, um, it went into the double garage um, and he built it. So it looped around the whole room and my brother's layout was on there and mine and so we had a piece each and i wish i had some pictures of it because it was it was really great and my dad's amazing he he's like everyone's dads are amazing uh, so he he built all of this so my sister had a little layout underneath his fiddle yard underneath the layout my brother had his and i had mine and we all had our own loop and everything and um yeah so i kind of grow up dad's got if you look at any of my videos on my dad's layout he's got an engine shed he's got a turntable he's got a coaling stage he's got a i guess a three line um 
station with this big old canopy going over it it's really i guess two but it's it can have three go into it um and yeah and he's got everything on it so um he's the most impressive person in my life and someone that i would aspire for, forever to try and be you know something towards what he is you know he's a great role model and um his layout kind of has always blown my mind and i love it when i see it um so yes yeah, so that's my favorite layout Oh, what a great answer. I love that answer. Mm. And the fact that you've shared your dad's layout with us on your YouTube channel and we've all been able to see it is uh, mm. it's great as well. And I can, you know, thinking about it and all the videos that you've done, can see why you'd be inspired by that. And uh, I love the fact that he's your dad, so there's more meaning to it um, mm. than just trains. Um, and, yeah, it's I, – I, I really like that he's done the little sections as well for, for you. Like you've, you've got your own little piece of layout. Um, and it just sounds wonderful. Like, yeah, the best way to enjoy the hobby. That's it. That's it. He, he was, it was kind of, I, I obviously, I know he likes doing the work on it, but I can imagine like, cause he would have been, I guess, mid thirties, my age now. And it's kind of like, oh, I'm going to build one for my son, you know. Um, yeah. I would have been eight at the time. And he's like, and I would have been, Dad, is my row we're done yet, you know. Um, and he'd been doing that. And they'd done a section for my brother. And he'd wire it all up and build controllers. And um, he'd have um, basically all the point motors. He'd have a little board. And you'd have kind of like nail heads, effectively. You'd have the, And you'd just touch which one you want. And that point would change. And a little LED would pop to show that it's open or closed. Um, and uh, it, was, it was just cool. So I could... Uh, yeah, I, I could have. I, yeah, he was my age doing that for all of us, and I just think he's a champion. Obviously, doing other things for mum, and you know, building a fence here or a shed over there, and you know, dads are amazing, aren't they? They seem to be able to do everything. Um, so you look back and just think, well, they're amazing creatures, you know, these fathers. So yeah, I remember one of the first videos of yours that I saw. Um, and it's always stuck with me because it was almost like watching this sort of family affair because it, it must have been one where I think you went went to your brother's house. Did, did yes. your brother your brother built a like a Thomas and Friends layout for his for your nephew? And yeah, um, I, I think I remember just watching the video and I was like, this just seems so wholesome that every like you all effectively yeah. had your own layouts at your own houses. But you still went around and you've done interviews with your dad where you've where your dad's built uh scratch built um coaches and stuff is that right that's right he's he, uh, he's always been able to build anything he's he's that guy my brother's similar he's he's built these layouts for obviously my nephew william and stanley um and i don't know like he did a nice thomas themed one so each loco can do a certain thing they had a certain job and um i've seen my, my nephew william from a little age now he's he's become quite an expert at the hobby and my brother's yeah he's just excellent he can fix cars you know he's been working on the house and i know he's he's very much like my dad my brother i like this kind of i've got a lot of people to look up to which is i feel very fortunate to have that in my life and um i don't know i'm kind of very grateful um so yeah so my my brother's now got his railway that he moved house and he's got a bungalow and in the garden is huge and they cleared a load of um the wood and shrubbery and everything and he's put this huge uh, log cabin there and now he's put that railway that was in the loft in the log cabin and it's stunning so i, I look forward to in the future hopefully do it if it will let me um do a video there and when william's layouts all built up and stanley's is there it'll be good to do a video on that and i'm sure william can tell me all about it um yeah so it is, it is nice sounds cool i look forward to seeing that that'd be pretty awesome yeah i i, I... But the thing that I, I remember watching that video in particular, your brother's house, was I was like, how does that loft take all that weight? <laughs> it <was> like... <laughs> yeah, it, it was actually a huge loft as well. It, it had a certain shape roof. Yeah. And like my my loft, it feels like it, I don't have half as much room as I should have. Um, it's kind of the opposite to a Dardis, well, you know. Um, whereas his <laughs> one, it, it was huge. And he had the perfect wood beams that only are against the roof he had none yeah. of the trestles that come in um and he it was one of the reasons why he bought the house because he was like this is perfect um so yeah so i remember going up there and it's like this is massive um yeah so uh, kind of i admired it very much yeah yeah that, yeah i'm very envious of people who get spaces like that so mm. you always want more don't you absolutely um, yeah, well tris uh we're coming to the end of the interview uh okay. it's been Absolutely wonderful talking to you. Well, thank uh, you. Last question is always 
uh, something that sort of evolved over time and originally was what your favorite resource, YouTube or Instagram. But nowadays we open it up to anything. So um, what is your favorite resource? My favorite resource is my father, <laughs> I guess. Um, but no, I don't I don't utilize him too much. Um, but when I was getting into certain things, he's been been a massive help. Um, and obviously, it's a bunch of people. It's, it's humans, really. Um, obviously, my brother, uh, Tony's trains of rugby. Um, Tony's been really, really great. So just talk to people, asking questions. Um, obviously, YouTube videos are great. I love watching the old black and white film videos. That's a great resource for inspiration. But resource comes in so many ways, isn't it? Um, just going to seeing railways um to see steam railways or some are still almost as you know how they were back then so it's a whole bunch of things favorite ones i, I guess the real favorite is uh, go to digget railway or seven valley railway or the great central railway and you get your inspiration as well as your ideas from there so yeah so real railways but people really the real thing yeah i like that i like that answer that's um and uh yeah, I think that's that's two for father now. So it's uh, yeah, definitely he's, definitely he's, a good resource to have. And 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 my brother as well. I don't want to leave him out. He he's also extremely knowledgeable. Um, but yeah, so it's uh, yeah, it's nice having that. Yeah, that's it. And it's it's always good to have someone in the know that can always help you out and give you that bit of knowledge. Um, because you know th this is such a wide subject, and there's always something that someone knows that that you may never have ever stumble across him if you hadn't spoken to him about it um and, one uh, one thing i would like to add so dan everson from tunnel lane um, oh yeah he, he i met him at wally um a couple of years ago and kind of we befriended each other um and started talking and i went to his place i did a video for there but he taught me in one day just some what he would probably consider a few basic things which simplify putting layouts together, which I now use, that make it feel like it's easy to get something together quickly. Um, so Dan has been a fantastic resource as well, um, and a good friend. So um, yeah, he's he's been great. That's cool. Yeah, that's always it's always good when you got someone who's uh, in the mm. know, give you those tips, and especially anything that gets you through layout building quicker. Because yeah. I, I don't think it's anything worse than putting those baseboards together and just wanting to run trains and just yeah. feeling you getting nowhere, isn't it? So brilliant. So, but yeah. I'd like to say thank you for you guys for inviting me on and to give me your time because obviously there's plenty of people that could come on here and and give people something enjoyable to listen to and to, something to relate to. So I'm hoping that I've in some way given people something to think about or to go, yeah, I I feel like that too. Uh, you know, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. Um, in, in, I really do, like everyone that comes on here, it's always so nice to talk to them. And I always feel more inspired for the hobby after that conversation. And yeah, um, I, as I said like at the start, you know, it's always been a pleasure watching your YouTube channel, watching your modeling journey and how you uh, have, have come into the hobby. And um, I think that you do. And yeah, talking to you today, it's been an absolute delight. And I'm certain that people listening have absolutely enjoyed this so thank you very much for coming on thank you awesome stuff okay we are going to take a break and we will be back shortly this world we live in is a wondrous and fascinating place we stand on the brink of greatness and a chance to make a real difference in this world. Two people who are not making a difference in the world are James and Sam. So great are their egos that you can now support them on Patreon from $5 per month to just show your support. You too can watch the model railway world burn under their narcissistic natures, head on over patreon.com forward slash model rail replacement podcast. And we are back for a little bit of a social media outro endings. Um, but you know, I'd just like to thank Tris for coming on the show. 
It's absolute delight to talk to him and it was a real pleasure. And I hope that you listening at home thought it was a pleasure to listen to too. Right then, Sam. Um, I think there was something I'd mentioned in there. I was trying to think of the name of a layout uh, and I couldn't quite think of the name. I think I called it Oak Road and I had mentioned this in last week's episode. Oak Road is a double O gauge uh, layout based on sort of the first great Western days uh it's a lovely layout if you ever get to see it uh the layout i was thinking of is old elm park which is currently in brm magazine if you go and look for that you can have a look at the images and understand why that's such an inspiring layout and makes you want to model low gauge what are we on to now our social media shout outs yeah i'm gonna go first this week uh so so this week i'm going to direct you to the otter creek and rio grande this is an american themed layout but it's got that very old western uh, sort of steam era we're talking these beautiful the stereotypical steam trains you would have seen on coffee mugs and paraphernalia that wasn't a, ste- a uk steam loco and it's a beautiful beautiful layout um so yeah they've they've got only 10.7 thousand subscribers and i think they definitely deserve more than that so um if you're looking for that I get Wild West themes from it and it makes me very, very happy. So, yeah, go and have a check out of that, the Otter Creek and Rio Grande. Yeah, it's a, it's a good little channel. I, I discovered it a few weeks ago and um, the videos can be very long sometimes, but they're very informative and it's um, quite an interesting. I think it was interesting to see how other people do things, especially when it's um, like what we spoke about before, isn't it? Uh, continental modelers and how they approach things to how we approach things and you can always get some good ideas that you think oh I didn't think of that um, which is a nice sort of little uh, segment into my suggestion which is Wessex and West uh, now this channel is a very small channel and I don't know why well I have a suspicion why so he's only got 741 subscribers but for some reason YouTube has it down as recommended only for kids but it's it's definitely not um so i don't know why it's being put out on kids youtube rather than you can get it on grown up youtube uh but as it suggests it is a layout based around the wessex and west area and the sort of i say the north american influence is the way the layout's been built so he's trying to build the layout in very much the same style as what they do in america by having the route climbing around the room um so there's a lot of helixes and stuff on there there's some absolutely beautiful modeling um it's sort of set around the BR era. I mean, you look at some of the thumbnails and they just look like photos from Cornwall in the 1990s of the various trains passing through, especially the ones he's got, like the 37 in front of the signal box. Um, that's got some, some blazy vibes about it to me. So that's my shout out. It's uh, West It Can West. If you can have a look at it, his latest video, he's uh, testing the Cavalex Class 60, um, showing the holage on that. And... Um, so it's always, always quite exciting to watch those videos because I think Gowerton Parkway is also testing the Acuristel 60, so we can all have a comparison of uh, locos there. Uh, yeah, that's that's my shout-out of the week. Excellent. I do follow Wessex and West as well, and it is a really, really nice channel, and the layout is incredible. Um, I love what they've done with the, the framing, not just on the bottom of the layout, but on the top of the layout as well to sort of frame it, and it, it really, really works, and you can see that north american influence that they have when they're building the layout yeah definitely so it's uh our own social media shout outs i suppose sam if um you want to let people know how they find you so if you want to find me you can find me on youtube at emperor's path alternatively the best way to get hold of me is on instagram at emperor's underscore path james how can they get hold of you well, you should know by now it's Western Signalman on YouTube, Instagram, or Western Signalman Outlook.com. But don't forget that me and Sam also have the Model Rail Replacement Podcast Instagram account. So come and find us there. And if you want to contact us, we are Model Rail RP at Outlook.com. Uh, that's pretty much it for this show. We have one show left for this season. Next week, it's a very special episode with very special guests. So please don't miss it. It's uh, absolute great episode i'm saying so now even before we finish recording the whole thing damn it i'm going to put my neck on the line and say it is um but apart from that that's the end of this show and so i hope that we have been entertaining informative and replace your model railway if only just for a little bit i've been james and with me has been sam good night this service terminates here Please ensure you take all of your personal belongings with you.